Holy Spirit, I pray right now that you would move our hearts, that I would get out of the way, that you would be in the way. Lord, I pray, have your way in us today. And I just pray, God, for your peace just to cover our hearts right now. Lord, manifest your presence. Thank you that you're in the room. We honour you right now. Father, I pray for all our families. I thank you, God, that you are in control. Lord, those things that are pending, those things that are top of mind right now, we give them to you right now in the name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. Amen? Cool. You may be seated, everyone. Well, this morning... um, I actually preached this word out in Pukekohe last week, and when I mentioned the topic, someone in the crowd went, oh, <laughs> and I thought, oh, great, this is going to be a great service this morning. Uh, this is probably one of the things uh, that are up there with discipline uh, and fasting. I'm going to talk about patience. Yeah, come on, Patience. I've got a lot of patience in my life that needs to be manifested. I need patience. When I got married, I married into a family that uh, the fast eaters, not all of them, but uh, you know when you go, like I remember going on a date with Sam and he would always finish first. No one likes to wait when you're, you know, you're, you're eating and someone's the first to finish and then you feel like you're slow. Uh, So, um, this morning I want to encourage us that God wants to produce patience, more patience in our lives. Amen? Amen. Patience is the ability to tolerate delay. And uh, there's been a lot of delays in the last few years, and I love what Andy Stanley, how he puts it. He puts, patience is the decision to move at someone else's pace rather than pressure him or her to match yours. So when you get married, you're not always like ahead of your spouse. You are walking together at the same pace. And sometimes we can feel like God is ahead of us, like, oh, God, I just feel like I have to hurry. Or we're ahead of God, like, God, come on, hurry up. I'm waiting on you. Nobody likes waiting in a line waiting in a queue, waiting in traffic, waiting for results, waiting for change. There's a lot of waiting that happens, and that's just part of life. And uh, they say uh, with um, companies, I was saying when people wait in queues, they said we've got to distract them. Uh, So you find that when you're waiting in line, there's always like a TV, there's music playing, there's magazines that you can look at, there's distractions. And who knows that when you're waiting and you have nothing to do, the wait seems longer. And I pray that we would anticipate, we would wait in faith for God to move on our behalf. Because he can. God is big and God is good. Um, I love what Charles Stanley says. He says, we need to accept difficult situations without giving God deadlines. Because when we're in the midst of a difficult situation, it's like, God, this is on my time. Please, if we place a demand on him, we place a date, a deadline, and we say, God, can you do this by this time? And sometimes he does, but we forget that God is in control. 1 Corinthians 13 says that love is patient. And we know that God is love and God is patient. He he has to be patient with us. The Greek translation for patience is long breath or long fused. So God is long fused where humans can be short fused. Am I right? I I get short fused from time to time. But Psalm 27, 14 says this, Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait on the Lord. It says it twice. There's a reason for that. You need to wait patiently. Wait on the Lord. Uh, Wait in anticipation. Wait and know that what's around the corner is good. 
I remember talking to someone and they said to me, oh, my life is too good right now. I think something bad is going to happen. Don't anticipate that. Wait in faith. And uh, some of you know uh, Pastor Willem from Pukekohe Church. He's my cousin, for some that didn't know that. Uh, And I remember receiving a text from him uh, towards the end of last year about uh, his brother James, who was in, in an accident, scooter accident, uh, he, I think his scooter hit a car, he was lying unconsciously for half an hour, and what took place was they rushed him to Brisbane Hospital, he's in Australia, and they said, uh, with this brain injury, uh, there's no hope, no chance of life, he'll be like a vegetable, so that's the news that Pastor Willem got. And when I'm talking about waiting in faith or waiting in anticipation, God really challenged me with my prayer life. He's like, are you anticipating that God will move on his behalf? When you pray, are you praying passively or are you praying passionately? And sometimes I can pray, you know, like, oh, God, I pray, you know, comfort, peace and healing. And that's good. That's awesome. But I felt like I needed to engage in this moment. So God really challenged me because I just thought, oh, well, there's no chance. We heard that it's not good news and that's that. But it was like anticipating a miracle around the corner. So I sent a a few videos to Pastor Willem. I've I've seen healings of people who were were on life support, who were um, totally healed, who came out of a coma. So I sent them these videos In anticipation, in anticipation, can I remind you that he was going to live. He was going to be a miracle story. So I sent them these videos. And sometimes you feel a bit, you know, oh, should I? It's a bit. And um, so two weeks after that, uh, his mother was told to go to Australia. They're going to turn off the life support and say goodbye. But she started watching these videos, and so did Willem's uh, father in Australia, They watched these videos, and they could see, well, God can do that. Then God can perform a miracle. Fast forward to now, Willem showed me a video of his brother James sitting up, eating, talking. They said he was going to be like a vegetable, so come on, give God a hand. That's awesome. (laughs) But it's not passively waiting, but waiting in anticipation for God to move And I want to encourage you for this year, are you anticipating for God to move, to release miracles in your family, friends, in your life this year? Because God wants to manifest miracles, I believe. Wait in faith for the Lord. Anticipate. You know, when you read the Bible, it's all about waiting, really. You see, there's a lot of waiting. They're waiting for the Messiah. He was prophesied hundreds of years before he was born. David was anointed king at the age of 16. He was a teenager, but he became king at the age of 30. We look at Abraham and Sarah, who were prophesied that they would have a baby. 25 years later, they have a baby. There's a lot of waiting involved, and that waiting can sometimes cause us to get anxious and angry with frustration And we see throughout the Bible where there has been impatience and frustration. We see that with Abraham and Sarah, where Sarah got, uh, you know, one of the concubines, Hagar, and said, well, you know, God's not um, going on our uh, deadline, so can you give us a baby? We can be impatient sometimes. And I really believe God wants us to slow down, but not wait passively but to be patient. And it says in Galatians 5.22 that it's the Holy Spirit who produces patience in our lives. I don't like patience because it means you have to be long-fused. And I love uh, one preacher says patience means to set the clock on extra time. Ain't nobody got time for that, am I right? You know, that's like... Uh, My daughter, Michaela, when she was younger, she used to tell stories, like, you know, come from school and she would tell us a story. And I am such a terrible parent. I would say, can you just give me the short version? (laughs) I just want the short version, not the long version. She's she's, 
uh, not like that anymore. But she used to tell the longest story, and I would sit there and go, okay. <laughs> Okay, and it was like, and the giraffe, and the, you know, like, she'd tell me these stories, and I would be like, in a hurry. And God doesn't want us to be in a hurry. Proverbs 4, uh, 15, 18 says this, a hot-tempered person stirs up conflict, but the one who is patient calms a quarrel. There's something calming about being patient, slowing down the tempo, Walking at the same pace of someone who is walking next to you. It's not a competition, if you know what I mean. You're like walking at the same pace. So a patient person sets the clock on extra time. Arnold Glassell says this, The key to everything is patience. You get the chicken by hatching the egg, not by smashing it. That's good. That's good, eh? That's a good quote. James 1.19 says to be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Now, I just want to challenge you with that, to be quick to listen, not thinking about your answer when someone talks to you. Have you ever talked to someone and you say something and they go, yeah, 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 and they're not even listening? It really annoys me. Um, I remember saying that to my sister one time, um, because she'd always anticipate, she'd go, yeah, yeah, I know what you mean, and I'm like, I haven't finished, let me tell my, I think that's where Michaela gets it from, but when I'm telling her something, she goes, yeah, yeah, I know, I know, and I'm like, no, you don't know, I haven't finished my story, but being quick to listen means engaging in the conversation, so you're listening to what people are saying, but also what they're not saying, in understanding where they're coming from. Being quick to listen means you're engaging 100%. You're not thinking about the next thing, but you're slowing down your pace in the conversation and you're listening. There's something off-putting when you talk to someone and they're not listening or their eyes are all over the place, um, unless they have a condition that doesn't matter. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, eyes here, look at me when I'm talking to you. I know that frustrates a lot of people, but being quick to listen, and slow to speak. Proverbs 29, 11 says, Fools vent their anger, but the wise quietly hold it back. Can I read that again? Fools vent, but the wise hold it back. Proverbs 8, 9 says, My words are plain to anyone with understanding and clear to those with knowledge. Make it plain and clear when you're speaking. Proverbs 10, 19 says, too many words lead to sin. I mean, some people can be talking a lot, but, you know, it's, it could be rubbish. So it's like, blah, 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 and it's like, actually slow it down and think about what you're about to say. You can say what you mean without saying it mean. So that's really good advice. Say what you mean, but don't say it mean. And that's great advice also for social media. Just shh, you know, shh. Number three, slow to become angry. James 1.20 says, Human anger does not produce righteousness that God desires. Psalm 4.4 4 says, Don't sin by letting your anger control you. Think about it overnight and remain silent. That's the only time you have the right to remain silent. So don't let your anger go. Just, just give it some time because time is precious. Patience is setting your clock on extra time. Mm, I'll think on that. I'll think on that. Being patient is being long-fused. And I remember... Uh, I had a person who wanted to take me out to a cafe. And, uh, you know, it wasn't a pleasant meeting because I, I knew what they wanted to see me about. They wanted to complain about the church. And so I had to live out that scripture, James 1.19, to be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. And I remember sitting at the cafe kind of like, okay. 
start now. <laughs> and this person said, oh, I don't like this. I, the church, you know, and she started complaining about everything we were not. She said, the church is not perfect. And I said, of course it isn't. It's the church. We're humans. Of course it's not perfect. It'd be perfect if it was just God. It'd be really perfect. But there are humans involved. And so she started, you know, and then she just talked for the whole half an hour. She cried. I just sat there. And I remained silent. And I just went, okay, okay. And being quick to listen is to actually hear what they're not saying. And so at the end of the conversation, I just said, thanks for that. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. Thanks for, uh, you know, like, raining on my parade. Anyway, thanks for, you know, thanks for nothing. Anyway, so after that, I just thought, God, what are you teaching me through that? Because I know in the natural, my human self would react. I would justify. I would plead my case. I would walk out of that cafe even before she said something because I would feel uncomfortable. But we need to have some uncomfortable conversations. I know for sure that a lot of us have had awkward conversations before, but it's been quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. And I was kind of proud of myself because I wasn't angry, because usually I'd be like, oh, fly off the handle. But remember, patience is being long-fused. Patience is actually... Okay, I'm going to take a step back and I'm going to walk at your pace. Fast forward two years later, this lady, uh, I saw her at another um, event and she said to me, I'm so sorry for what I did to you in that cafe. And I said, oh, that's, she said, I just didn't realise. And I just said, I totally understand. I get it. And she just said to me, I'm so sorry. And, you know, since that moment, it repaired our relationship. Because here's the thing. Humility is really powerful in relationships, but it requires patience. If you think about your relationships right now, how, where have you lost patience and where do you need to pick it up? So maybe there's a family member or a, a work colleague, or someone that you kind of go, oh, I've lost patience with that person. I just want to encourage you, pick it up again. Because maybe God wants to use you to encourage them. Maybe God wants to show you how you can pray for them. Yeah. I love what it says in James 5. It talks about a farmer, uses the example of a farmer who's planting a crop, to, crop and says, uh, in, in James 5, it talks about how the farmer needs to be patient and needs to strengthen his heart. But it also says not to grumble about each other. And I just think about that scripture because I think, how many times do I go, yeah, I'm patient. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm encouraged, you know, I, I get strengthened by the word and prayer um, I've got a community of believers that uh, strengthen my heart and strengthen my faith. But then I grumble. Because grumbling is waiting when you're waiting, but you're complaining about it. And we've got to watch the words that we speak. We've got to watch how we conduct ourselves. Be patient. Strengthen yourselves in the word and in prayer. But do not grumble about one another. We've got to learn to wait quietly because we're waiting for an answer to come and sometimes it's not the answer that we were thinking. Maybe it's, not the, maybe it's a, a yes and sometimes it's a no. But we've got to understand that God is in control. God is so good. God is so good. And I just want to encourage you with this scripture, uh, Isaiah 40, 31. It says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Waiting upon the Lord. I pray that your strength would be renewed in this season. 
in the season of disruption. It's, it's a disruptive season, and it feels like it's going on forever. But I remember they were interviewing someone in a developing country, and he said an interesting thing. He said, disasters, natural disasters are normal in our country. He said, disruptions are normal life. You just have to accept it. And I know for us living in a comfortable you know, country like New Zealand, we can lose perspective. And we can think, oh, man, all these disruptions. And yeah, I get it. It's hard. But we've got to accept the fact that disruptions are normal. Some people would say it's our new normal. But we've got to welcome disruptions. I thank God for disruptions. If my sister didn't disrupt me to go to church, I wouldn't have become a Christian. There are so many disruptions I think about that I think, oh, man, why, why? And then it's like, oh, okay, I get it. God, you're in control. Let's be patient and set our clock for extra time. It says you will mount up with wings like eagles. When eagles mount up, it means that they fly above obstacles. They fly above and they start to get perspective. You look down, everything seems smaller. When you go up, God starts to open your eyes. See, it wasn't that bad. Wait upon the Lord. He'll renew your strength, but He'll cause you to mount up. Maybe you're feeling weighed down today. I pray that you would mount up, that you would see above every obstacle in your life. Set the clock on extra time. Don't be in such a hurry. I just want to finish with this one story. On Christmas Day, just gone in 2021, my mum left our house uh, on Christmas Day and, you know, we hugged her, gave her a kiss. And, you know, when mum leaves, I always pray Psalm 91. Thank you, Lord, that your angels encamp around those who fear you. My mum left, went uh, home, and then we get this call. We were on our way up north uh, for Christmas night, and um, we got a call, and it was my sister. She said, mum's been in 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 a terrible accident. And I went, what? And I just remember my heart just like, oh, I was fretting. I was like freaking out. And we were in the car. And I was panicking, and I just said, God, I thank you, you're with her. But in that moment, I was like, why, why? I was thinking of all the moments. Oh, I should have said this to my mum. Oh, I wish I had more time. And sometimes we can be in such a hurry that we forget. We don't know the day or the hour when we're going to go to be with the Lord. And my mum you know, I could see my mum's face and we drove to the accident where the accident was. It was on Swanson Road in West Auckland and a, a driver who was high on drugs was driving towards oncoming traffic and my mum, my mum's car was the first to get hit. And when we got there, we saw fire trucks and police cars just all over the place. And I just, I remember sitting there going, I wish I had more time with my mum because I started to panic. And I was, I was like, God, help me not to be in such a hurry all the time. I wish I said this to my mum. So I started going through, you know, I, you know, I'm a bit dramatic. And then we saw my mum's car and the front part was like split. Uh, she had uh, driven into a tree. And I just remember going, oh my God. Then I saw her walking around the car, going, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> you know, mum's 79. So for that to happen, I'm like, oh, phew. And then the panic stopped. But it taught me a lesson because I'm always rushing my mum. I'm always rushing people. I'm like, oh, I've got to go to this next thing. But we need patience because we don't know how much time we have. And my mum said to me, I was ready. I was ready to go to heaven. I'm like, yeah, good one, mum. But, you know, 
Think about the relationships you're in and don't live in regret because you don't know the time, the day, the hour. Mum said she was ready to go. But don't regret the things that you didn't say. Do you know what I mean? Let's not have regret on what we didn't say. And so I just said to my mum, you were ready, weren't you, mum? She said, I was ready. Then she started sharing her faith with the police and the, the firemen that were there. She was like, oh, it was my God that saved me. And mum was saying to me, ah, oh, time is nothing when you have Jesus. So I just want to encourage you with this. Set your clock on extra time with people. Don't neglect relationships. Like, set your time. Set your clock on extra time because you never know. So when we leave this place, encourage someone. When you leave this place, send someone a text because you don't know the day or the hour. Can I get everyone to stand? And I want us to worship. I want us to give our time to the Lord because He is worthy of all our praise. He loves you. God is patient and He is kind and He is willing and ready to move on your behalf. Amen.